Good morning, everybody. Welcome. This is a quick paint of one of my latest paintings. Um, I have my paints displayed for you. It's from beginning to end, starting off here with my sketches and mistakes. Um, it was really important to me to get this right, so um, it took quite a few sketches. And then once I got that to where I liked it, I started in on the darks. And I always start with my darks first, with the biggest brushes. That's how I was taught, and I teach my own students this way, that you start with your darkest darks, and you squint a lot, and you use your biggest brushes, and then you work your way to your medium tones, and then your lightest tones. And I always like to start off with a base coat that's a strong color that will I'll let show through my strokes. You'll see both in the background and in the subject matter. And it gives it a kind of unity because having that kind of the peachy color, or in this case, it's more of a terracotta color, uh, show through, it just gives it unity. So as you see, as I get to the lighter colors, the brush gets smaller and I can start doing details, but I always hold off white till the very end. So even what you're seeing right now may look like white, but it's not. I love doing white, but I gotta hold myself back the whole time. I'm just so ready to do white. And when I finally get to put it on, it's like the icing on the cake. My husband makes fun of me for calling it that, but it is, it's the icing on the cake. So while you're watching this, let me tell you the background about how this was inspired because it means a lot to me. Uh, you'll see that this is a picture of kind of a, a woman almost like my age and station, I guess. And she's holding, although it's hard to see, a pair of scales behind her back. And this image came to my mind when I was on social media one time and somebody wrote something that really, um, it really caught me and I wanted to write something back, you know, something that would really make them see a, a different point of view. And my husband and his uh, wisdom said, Megan, don't do it. You'll regret it. And, um, uh, I kept thinking about it and saying, but what if I just do this little comment? What, what if I just uh, say this thing and maybe that person will realize, you know, a different point of view. And he said, Megan, who are you to judge someone else? And immediately this picture came into my head, kind of like, I, how often have I been judging people and not realizing it? holding those scales behind my back. Um, and more and more, I, I immediately had gone to my sketchbook and started sketching this out. And even some of those sketches are, are on my Facebook page. But um, I started realizing from that day forward how often I would be just doing these random judgments on people and thinking, who am I really? I can only be worthy enough to judge my own self. I only know what I've been through. I don't know what anyone else has been through, what hardships they've been given in this life. Who am I? And so this image of a woman who's in the realization of catching herself, once again, judging someone else. And she realizes she's holding those scales behind her back and she's just about to drop them. They're just sliding from the tips of her finger and she's looking back as if to see and notice them that they were there. And I think that's how we are sometimes, or at least how I am. This is more of one of those life lessons that I needed. I don't know if anybody else needs it, but I do. And it's been such a help to me having this hanging in the house and working on it and realizing that I just need to love people. They're all my brothers and sisters and they're all given hardships and different things to deal with in their lives. And it's not my job to judge, which is actually a great relief. It's so nice not to have to judge. 
it's so much easier to just love them no matter what. And so that's how the inspiration for this all came about. And uh, my friend Dana Davis posed for this, and she's uh, mom and part athlete. You can tell by those muscles. Look at her arm. She's a volleyball player. But um, we had great times just having her pose for this and taking the photos. She had great insights too. And um, we talked about it in depth. So um, what you're seeing now is kind of the cold side that I'm working on. The back part, just as what you can see where I'm standing or sitting in this painting right now, there's a cold light coming from the right and a warm light coming from the left. And that's the same way I posed my model. And so from the back, you have that cold light that's illuminating where the scales are. And then you have that kind of warmth of enlightenment on the side that's her front side that she's facing. And uh, I like the juxtaposition of warm versus cold. I do that a lot in my paintings. And so this is no different, but I also love um, how they can show the difference between two sides. Uh, and here's the white going on. Oh man, I just love white. White is so beautiful. But you can never do too much of it or else it's just not as special if you do too much white. And so Um, there's some hidden meanings that people can find for their own selves. The kind of clothing that she's wearing, the, the kind of timelessness and genericness of it, because I didn't want this to appeal to any certain time. And I wanted it to be rather on the generic side. And I try to do that with quite a few of my paintings. She's also wearing kind of a bound belt, which um, took me forever to figure out years ago, back when I was doing my first uh, Esther painting. And uh, that's something that I took from Sir Lawrence Alma Tatama, the painter. And he did so many Greco-Roman type paintings. And he was not only an artist, but he was a historian. And he loved to make sure that his models were dressed appropriately for their time zone. And so if you uh, look at some of his paintings, you'll see how he wrapped them up so that you take a, a general little shift, plain shift that a woman can wear and make it fit really well according to her proportions just by using those ropes and strings tied around in the right way. And so here's the warm light. I think the end of the painting is often the most pleasing time because then things start to pop out with the highlights. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed painting it and that it means something to you. Feel free to subscribe and see more and look at my website, just my name, Megan Reeker, and you'll see more prints and originals and more of these. Take care. Bye-bye.